Hey guys, in this video I'm going to demonstrate the Spectrum Photoshop action. So I'll work through three different examples of the effects, just so that you get really familiar with what all the layers do and how they affect the design. So firstly, we're going to run the action on this photo, and uh, well this is the result I got. Um, and I didn't change any of the layers, so this is the default colors. Now, uh, all these textures and shapes are randomized every time we run the action, so it's going to be hard for us to... Um, to get this exact same result because yeah, all the shapes, textures, their their positions are randomized, their rotations, so that's all different. Um, secondly, I'll open up this photo and again we'll just experiment with the layers and I'll change around some colours. This example just shows, you know, how you know with a bit of experimenting how um, much you can vary your results. So you can see with the colours of rotated the shapes, move them around, rotated the paint textures in the background. And this one here kind of shows how you don't have to use the um, all these shapes if you don't want. You can just they're all in a folder, you can turn them off. So you can just use a stylized look of your subject and keep the textures in the background. Or you can turn off all the textures in the background and just, you know, use the new stylized look of your photo. Lastly, uh, I'll open up this photo and um, again just going to play around layers and see what we come up with. So I'll, cl I'll click through a few more examples uh, of the effect. Okay, uh, let me just close all this down. Alright, so if you're familiar with my actions, um, it's just the same setup, um, but for those who um, haven't used any of my effects before, I'll just run through a, a small checklist of things to make sure your Photoshop file is set up correctly, otherwise you'll run into errors and the action just won't work at all. So firstly, uh, when you've opened up a photo, look into your lay panel and your photo should look identical to this. It should say background and it should have a lock symbol on the on the layer. Okay, so for those of you who have opened up a photo and it doesn't look like that, this is what you need to do. So let me just let me just delete the background layer. So say I've just opened up a photo, it's called layer one. I need to set that correctly as a background. So I go to uh, layer, new, background from layer. And you can see that just sets it as a background. So again, you only need to do that if you've opened up your photo and it doesn't look like this. Okay. Next, uh, still in the layer panel, go to this top right hand corner icon here and uh, click on that. It's not visible on my screen, but click on that and scroll down to panel options. Right down the bottom here, make sure add copy to copy layers and groups is ticked. Click OK. Next, go to image mode make sure you're in RGB color mode and 8 bits channel is selected. Uh, still an image, go to image size and uh, you can see the size of my photo here, 2400 by 3200. Uh, you know, I was testing this photo a lot between uh, with photos between 2000 to 4000 pixels and found that was probably the best range. Um, optimal range is probably 2500 to 4500 pixels. So if you've opened up your photo and it's only say 1500 or 1800 pixels, scale it up a bit. Um, you won't really lose that much quality and the effects should still look really good. So uh, yeah, so always make sure you're working with high resolution photos. Now, what I need to do now is create a new layer. So let's go to layer, new layer. Now this layer must be called brush, all in lowercase. Okay, the action won't work at all if this step is not done. Okay, so create a new layer called brush. So the idea with the brush layer is that we want to make a selection around our subject and fill it in with a color, okay? So what I'm gonna do, because my subject is on a pure white background, it's easy for me to select him. So I'm just gonna select my background layer for a set. I'm gonna hit W to get magic, to get the wand tool out. It's over here, magic wand tool. 
Now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna click on the background here, and that's gonna select all the white tones. So I'm just gonna click there, and you can see it's made a selection uh, around my subjects. So if I, if I now select my brush layer, now if I fill this selection in with the color, so I'll just grab uh, red as my foreground color. If you want to fill um, a selection with a foreground color, hold down Alt Backspace or Option Backspace, and that will fill it with your foreground color here. So you can see I've filled that in, but it has filled everywhere else apart from my subject. So what I need to do is invert that selection. So Control Shift I or Command Shift I. That will invert it. Now Alt uh, Backspace or Option Backspace, and that will fill in our subject. So I've got my brush layer. I have filled him in. So that step is all good. Now I need to load up the Actions panel. So go to Window, Actions, and it should pop up to the side here. Go to this top icon here and go to Load Actions. Select the Spectrum.atn file that was included in the download. Okay, and it'll pop up here. Uh, now before we run an action we need to load up the brushes or included in the download so click anywhere over uh, the canvas here and hit B okay that'll bring out the brush tool right click that'll bring out the brushes panel okay so what I need to do here is replace these are just Photoshop default brushes I need to replace these with the spectrum brushes so click on this little gear icon here and down to rep uh, replace brushes click on that and select the spectrum brushes.abr file and that has replaced the um, default photoshop brushes with the spectrum ones okay so that's all good now just before we run the action make sure your brush opacity is at 100 percent so hit b on the keyboard again that will activate the brush tool you can see the opacity up the top here i'm just going to drag that to 100 percent okay so if you've run the action and the result, um, you know, all the textures and the shapes are very faint. It's probably because your opacity is way down. So crank that up to 100. Okay. And another good habit to get into, um, this isn't essential, but before you run an action, to go to Edit, Purge All. That just um, clears out any history banked up in Photoshop, which could be slowing it up a bit. Okay. So click on this Play, play icon. That is the Actions panel. Okay, so we've got three actions here. Uh, don't worry about these two yet. They're designed um, uh, to use after we have run the Spectrum action. So I'll, I'll get onto those. Uh, so all you need to do is uh, select the Spectrum action and click play. But with, all my, with any one of my actions, what I like to do is twirl open um, the action that reveals all the steps, okay? And you see this little scroll bar here. Okay, so when I click play now, um, it's going to go through all the steps and this scroll bar is going to start moving down so that'll give me an idea of um, how much longer the action's got to play back so this action takes about two to two and a half minutes uh, maybe less really depends on the speed of your computer and how the resolution of your photo okay so uh, I'm just going to let this run and I'll fast forward the video and uh, get to the result alright the action just finished playing back and took about two minutes so firstly, I'm just going to collapse the Actions panel. And what you want to do straight away is uh, collapse all the folders that are open here. It's a bit messy, so to do that, hold down Control alt or Command Option on a Mac. Click on the Spectrum folder arrow here. And what that does, it just collapses all the folders. So it's all a bit neater. Now, uh, here's the Spectrum folder. Everything is inside that. So if I turn, let's see a bit here. If I turn this off, you see there's the before and the after. Okay. Uh, if you want to run the action again, just simply delete the Spectrum folder. And I've left the brush layer up the top here, so uh, you can run the action again. Maybe you want to refine your selection a bit as well. So I'll just undo that. Yeah, and, and like I said, every time you run the action, the these shapes, these textures, are, you know, the position rotation is completely different. So it's worth maybe running it a couple of times and saving out each each result um, as a separate PSD file and you know um, just compare them at the end and start working with one that you think looks best uh, but you can rotate all these shapes and textures anyway so uh, I'll get into that uh, 
I usually go down from the top and explain what each one does, but I'm going to just go into um, doing the things that I like to do first when the action is run, just to clean things up a bit. Now, what I like to jump to first is the photo edge lines, okay? So what this layer does, if I turn it off, sort of goes around um, and looks for highly contrasted areas in your photo, um, the contours, and just outlines it with a with a black line, okay? Now, the reason why I jumped to this one first is because um, usually it can put, you know, lines over your subject's face that you don't want, okay? Maybe it's put some, like, weird lines around your subject's nose or mouth and it just doesn't look right. So what you want to do is select the photo edge lines mask, okay? Now, if I start brushing black, so if I hit B on the keyboard, it'll activate my brush tool, and uh, with every set of brushes that I included in, in the download, in the top left-hand corner, I include a soft brush, which is just ideal for brushing into masks. So select that. Now, if I grab a black brush and start brushing away, what that's doing, it's removing the effect. It's hiding it, okay? So when you brush black onto a mask, it hides that layer. White will reveal it. So you can see by default, it's fully visible. And, you know, say I just want to remove these few lines around his face. I just start brushing and they're gone. Okay? So any any other um, lines that you don't want, just scan around the subject and um, start erasing through the mask. Now, the layer that I like to jump to after the photo edge lines is this one here. Reveal normal photo. And I've got in brackets brush mask. So currently... If I turn this layer on and off, it does nothing. It's because it's hidden through the mask. Okay, you see the mask is all black. So if I hold down shift and just click on that mask, it will just disable it. So now it shows the layer, okay? Now all the layer is, is just a copy of our cutout, our brush layer, with no effects applied, and it's just put up the top above all the other effects, okay? So it overrides, um, overrides all the effects. So the idea with this layer is Again, um, it's useful if you run the action on um, uh, a person and the face is a bit distorted by some of the effects. What you want to do is select the mask, grab a white brush, okay, because we want to reveal that layer. So currently my active brush is black. If you hit X, it'll flip it um, from black to white. So white is now my active color. Okay. So if I just um, start brushing over his face, you can see that it has revealed that the normal photo. So the idea here is, well, the way I like to do it is I just brush a little bit. I don't really need to do it with this photo because I think his face uh, looks really good here. But for those that have run the action and the face is a bit distorted, just you know adjust your brush size. You can do that with the left and right square brackets. And just brush a patch over the face like that. All right. Now what I like to do is then drag the opacity of that layer to zero. So currently it's at 100. So if I click, hold, and drag on that word opacity, I'll drag it to the left, that'll bring it to zero, right to 100. So I'll start off at zero, and I'll just slowly start dragging to the right, and all that's doing is slowly bringing on that layer, okay? So you only, um, usually only need to reveal a little bit, you know, around 20 to 50%, okay? So it's just to help clear up, um, yeah, any areas of your photo that you want to um, make a bit clearer that might be distorted by all the effects. Okay, so that's that. Um, I'll zoom out a bit. Now, I'll go back up to the top now to explain um, what these three do. So, the adjust brightness, whoops. Sorry. The adjust brightness uh, contrast layer is an exposure adjustment layer. So, if you double click on this box, okay, it brings up the exposure properties. And you just want to play around with these sliders, okay? So, if I drag the, the gamma correction to the left, and right, you can see that's adjusting the uh, the brightness. So you can fine tune your design that way. Offset, okay, and then exposure. So play around with those. This one here, I put to quickly give you a preview. Um, you know, say like blue is the default uh, result, uh, default color that you get after running the action. So if you double click on this box here, you can use this hue slider, okay, start dragging that around, and it just gives you uh, a, 
different color. So it's just a quick way to recolor your design, but I'll show you um, how I prefer to do it. Uh, overall sharpening, I've got in brackets here opacity. So this supplies a little bit of sharpening over your design. It's at 50% opacity, you can turn it up to 100. Okay, that'll just sharpen it more. Uh, so if you want, if you prefer to sharpen your layer, your, your design after you've moved all the shapes and stuff around, maybe just turn that off and then sharpen it at the end. Okay. So I've gone through that one. Uh, paint drops, fairly simple. Those are the the white um, little splatters you see everywhere. So I'll turn that on and off. Okay. You can select the folder and you know hit Control or Command T, start rotating them around if you want. You can scale them up. Uh, if you if you go inside this folder, you see there's just five different uh, layers here, and um, you can see you can move them all around. You can duplicate them if you want more. Just click on a layer, hit Control Command J, that'll duplicate it, and move it around. Uh, if you want to recolor some, uh, there's a few ways you can do that. You can double click on the layer, okay, and go to Color Overlay. And you can apply, maybe you want black splatters. Um, or something else you could do is flatten the entire group, select it, hit Control or Command E. So it merges all the drops onto one layer. And then uh, you could use, you can go down the bottom here, click that, go to Solid Color. Okay, I'll just pick a red for the moment. So what that's done, it's created a solid color uh, layer here. And if you hold down Alt or Option, and move your mouse between these two layers, it will clip this um, this solid color layer to only affect the layer below. So now I can just double click on this this uh, box here and change the colors. All right, so that's that. Now shapes coloring. So if you go inside here, uh, I've got three main layers. I've got color area one, color area two, and color area three. So these are a quick way, um, similar to randomized overall color, a quick way to recolor the shapes. Okay, so if you click on this box here, you can pick a new color. All right, simple as that. Now these two here, color area two and three, by default, I've got them turned off. So if you turn them on, you can see uh, it blends all the three colors together. And again, you can just double click on these boxes and um, change the color. All right. Uh, yeah. So just keep in mind that uh, they are off by default. So if you want to experiment with blending colors, turn them on. All right. I'll come back to this folder in a sec. Uh, now this layer here boosts shapes intensity. I've got embraced opacity. If you turn that on, I'll turn it on and off so you can see clearly what's going on. So so it just boosts up um, or just makes the shapes a bit more visible. Okay, hardens the edges up, edges up a lot more. Um, so if I move this layer around, okay, you can see what, what this layer is. It's a duplicate of the shapes folder here. So the shapes folder has all the shapes inside of it, okay? And so what I've done with this layer is simply duplicated it, flattened it, and, whoops, I'll move that back. So it sits on top of our shapes folder and just makes it all a bit more prominent, okay? So the shapes folder here, if you go inside this folder, we've got a whole bunch of layers and it's set up um, very simply. So you've got uh, these layers here in orange, they are the shapes. So if I select um, S2 and I start moving it around, you can see there it is there, there's that shape. And you can move any one of these around. You can duplicate them if you want more shapes. And you can click on these boxes here above them, the purple layers, and you can change the color. So say if I wanted a black, a black shape there, I can do that. I can go to red. Okay, recolor. Um, yeah, any shape you want. So what generally what I like to do here is go down. I like to quickly flip it to black, so it helps me clearly see which um, shape layer it is. And generally, I find that you know some layers look, um, some shapes look much better with a different tone. So maybe I'll go like a grey there. I think this one here is looking pretty cool in black. No, maybe I'll get it white. So yeah, I'll go down the line here and um, 
Yeah. Quickly flip into black. Just like that. So I make this one a bit darker. Okay. So yeah, you can go through all those. Now, a little trickier, what I like to do is um, if you select these three folders and layers here, okay, and if I zoom out, control or command minus, or zoom out, if I hit control or command T, okay, that'll put a bounding box around um, the layers and folders here. So what I can do is essentially rotate these shapes like this, and I can reposition them. Okay, so it's a quick way of, um, you know, there might be a better um, combination of shapes, like if you rotate them, um, yeah, you might find that, you know, on this angle looks better. So the reason why I select all three is because this layer here is a duplicate of these shapes here. So it makes sense for me to rotate them together, okay? So if I just grab this one and rotate this one alone, you'll see how it's, whoops, I've grabbed the mask. I'll select the folder, try that again. You can see how it's not rotating with the, the shapes intensity layer. So it's basically just created a whole bunch of different shapes, which you might like, which is all part of sort of experimenting, but um, that's what I like to do. And shapes, coloring, uh, you want to grab this folder as well uh, because what this, the shapes coloring is, is essentially a duplicate of the shapes folder um, but I flattened them all onto one layer and then applied um, an adjustment solid color layer to quickly um, change the overall color. All right, but uh, with the other examples I'll, I'll get back into doing that again so it's a bit more uh, obvious what they do. So this one here Paint strokes, paint strokes over photo. If I turn this one on and off, you see it's, it's a subtle effect, and what it does, it looks for the highlights in your photo and just overlays um, some paint strokes just to give it a bit more detail. Okay, so this will appear a lot more prominent depending on your photo. Um, if your subject's face is quite light and white, this will um, overlay a lot more. Photo wedge lines. I've gone through that. Now this layer here, uh, use original photo color. If I turn that on, uh, yeah, what it does, it just overlays the original color of your photo. All right, and you can adjust the opacity of this layer if it's a bit too strong. So I could uh, click on that word opacity, drag it down to zero, and then just increase it a little bit. So you can use a little bit. Uh, another technique what I like to do is select the mask, control or command I to invert it, all right? And I'll just start brushing on where I want that color to appear. So if I hit B, make sure white is my active color because I want to reveal the layer. I just brush a big patch up here, like that, and maybe you know a little bit down here. So uh, if I hit X, it'll revert to a black brush, so I can brush that away. Okay, something like that. This folder here, photo style build, you don't really need to do anything with this folder. If I turn it off, it basically just hides um, our subject. So you can see all that's visible here is the layer we just brushed on, the use original photo color. Okay, you can see a little bit visible here from the mask, the reveal normal photo layer here. If I turn it on and off, you can see that. And here you can clearly see the photo edge lines. All right, so I'll turn the photo style build folder back on. So all, um, all it is inside here is a bunch of different layers. Uh, I didn't bother renaming them, rename them because it just would have taken up more time in the action playback. And you don't really need to experiment with these layers too much. But basically these are all the layers that were required to build um, this specific style for your subject, okay? Uh, you know, if I turn them all off, start from the bottom there so I turn these on it starts building the look of your photo 
And you know you can go down there and turn turn ones off that you don't want. Maybe you get the result looks better by turning a few off. Uh, but that's just the default result. Okay, so this folder here, paint. If I turn it off, okay, it is essentially all the paint, all the white paint you can see in the background there. Okay, so if we go inside here, uh, we've got a bunch of different layers again. Um, so the ones in green are the paint strokes, paint splatter and stuff. So uh, PS1 is the large uh, paint splatters you'll get around the edges of your subject. So every time you run the, the action, you'll get these large splatters around the edges. That's this top one here. All right. Uh, again, you can change the colors just by clicking on that box above it. All right. Now these ones here are individual little paint strokes. So I can grab PS2 for example, and I'll start moving that around so you can see that that one there. Okay. So yeah, by default, I've I've made these all these paint strokes appear at the center of where you brushed. So they sort of all appear in here and they're rotation um, are randomized so what you want to do is definitely grab these and start moving them around position them where where you want so I can move that up there uh, you know grab this one here you know and other things you can experiment with is moving these paint strokes outside of the folder so I could shift select these two layers here okay because I just want to keep this color uh, adjustment layer with it and I can drag this up above the photo style build. You know, so what that'll do now is overlay that paint stroke over my subject. Okay, which can look pretty cool. I'll undo that. And again, I always like to experiment with quickly flipping it to black and seeing um, if a darker stroke looks better. But I think white is suiting this pretty well. Um, so that's those. PS8 um, sits right at the back here. It's a pretty large uh, paint texture. Uh, once again, this can look really cool in black, so I always check it out. But I think white is looking good. So that's the paint file. Uh, this this layer here, angular angular lines. I've got in brackets here opacity. Uh, these, I'll just turn on and off so you can see what it is. It's these subtle black lines that run around your design. I've just got in brackets opacity because it's at 60% opacity. Uh, if you drag that to 100%, <coughs> it'll yeah, make them appear uh, much more. You can duplicate the layer. That will also make it appear uh, much more prominent. So I don't mind them a bit stronger, so I'm just going to duplicate it once. Okay, it looks pretty cool. Now these two layers here, soft overlay texture and soft overlay texture two, if I, if I turn them off, you can see the background becomes uh, well a lot more white. But if I, when I turn them on, it just adds a subtle texture, um, you know, going from, from black to white in the background and just adds a bit of variance. If I select soft overlay texture and you can see its default opacity is 14%. If I crank that up to 100%, you can clearly see the texture there. All right, uh, I created that texture with uh, some charcoal, sort of just smudged it onto a bit of paper, scanned it in, and that's what that is. Okay, so I'll just bring that opacity back, and this one here, if I drag it up to 100%, that uh, soft overlay texture too appears more around um, your subject. And the top one is kind of like all over your canvas. So I don't mind that one a bit stronger. I'm just going to check that out again. I think that looks good. Background color, you can just click on this box here and apply a different color background. All right, pretty simple. But I found um, with testing this action across a whole of photos that sort of white, a bit gray, suits the design the best. Um, it's just the way I built the action uh, for a white or grayish background. But you can easily change the color. If you turn the background color <coughs> layer off, basically that just falls onto your original photo background. But because mine is white, you can see that it's just fallen onto a white background. 
So if there was like a basketball stadium behind him, um, you'd see that stadium appear in the background. All right. So that is a rundown of all the layers and how they work. I'm going to go through the, now, uh, the next two examples now, and uh, I'll get back into you know showing you again how these these three layers can really enhance your design. Um, yeah, so I'll open up the next example. Okay, I've just finished running the action on the second example, and this is this is what I got. So I'm going to just collapse these folders. So Control Alt or Command Option. Click on the Spectrum folder arrow. Now what I'd like to do, well I'm just looking at his face, his face looks good, I like all the line work uh, around him, so I'm just going to keep all that, uh, That's, but I'm just going to preview it with it off, and just take a look around the design, and I'm just seeing if anywhere um, looks better with the lines hidden, but I think it suits it really well, so I'm going to leave it all on. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to shift select, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to turn on the boost shapes intensity, I'm just going to preview that. I'll probably have it with it off, I kind of like it a bit more subtle, so, uh, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold down control or command, I'm going to click on these three folders and load, and I'm going to zoom out, control minus, command minus, and control command T to scale. So I'm just going to preview the shapes in a different rotation. So I'm just going to rotate that around and just uh, and if I want to snap back to the original result, I'll just hit escape. I think the, the default result actually looks really good. So I'm going to just keep that. Okay. I'm going to jump into the shapes coloring folder. And I'm just going to turn on uh, color area 2 and 3 to see how the purple and the green interact with the design. Uh, not too bad, I'm just going to turn off the green for starters and just look at the purple. Now there's a few things you can do to experiment with this, uh, with these layers again. You can select the actual layer here and rotate it. So you can go edit, transform, uh, flip, flip horizontal. And that is just going to rotate, uh, or I can zoom out again, hit Control T, and just rotate it. And that's just going to put the purple tones in a different area. So you can see it changing there. Uh, and again with the mask. So if I hold down Alt Option and click on the mask, you can see all the mask is, it's a um, duplicate of our Shapes folder. Okay. Uh, so I'll go back inside that. It's a duplicate of our Shapes folder, and it's merged onto one layer, and I've set it up as a mask. So the color will only appear in the in the white tones, okay? It's going to fade off as it heads to black. So you can select the mask, uh, just make sure that these layers are unlinked. I've accidentally left this one on, so just click on that link chain, and that will unlink it. So I can select the mask, and then Control command t again, I can start rotating that, and that is also going to rotate um, the position of the purple tones. So I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to check it out. Uh, get something looks a bit cooler. Maybe there. I'll zoom in, and I'm just going to click on this box here. I'm going to check out some different colours. Uh, but I always think blue and purple go well together, so I'm not going to leave that. That looks pretty cool. But you can't go wrong with blue and purple. Keep that. Another thing you want to play around here is with the blend modes, okay? So you've got the color adjustment layers. They've got their own blend mode of color. You can see that there. Okay, then your color area, one, two, and three, and they've got different blend modes. So you've got overlay, vivid light, and this one's vivid light as well. So I can select that and like change it to lighten. Or you can scroll down through uh, any one of these. So I can go from the top here, normal, and I'm just using the wheel on my mouse to scroll down through the different blend modes. So you can see as I scroll down, it really um, it changes every time. So I go back to Vivid Light. And I didn't mind light, and so I'm going to flick between the two. And a little technique I like to use to flick between two different things that you like is say if I want to flick between Lighten and Vivid Light. I'll select, I'll go through, oh, sorry, I'll go from Vivid Light, I'll go back to Lighten, and then I'll just hit Control or Command Z, 
on the keyboard and that'll just flip between the two so it gives me a quick preview of those so I don't mind lighting so I'm going to keep it at that I'm going to turn on color area 3 again I'm going to check that out uh, don't mind the green okay maybe let's keep it at that <clears throat> okay so I'm pretty happy with those colors now, if I go down to shapes, there's another thing I want to talk to you about, um, and that's the mask on this folder here. So you can see, if I hold down Alt or Option click on the mask, you can see that I've got, um, where well, our subject here, it's filled in with grey. And basically, what that's doing is, it's preventing the shapes from coming through our subject at 100% opacity. Okay? If this was black, a solid black, the shapes would not intercept with our subject at all. But because it's grey, I'm allowed to show through a little. And you can actually control this in a really quick way. If you double click on this mask here, okay, you've got this density handle here, this slider. And it, at the moment, it's at 55%. Now, if I turn this up to 100%, you'll see all the shapes start disappearing from our subject. If I drag this to zero, okay, they show through at 100%. So if you look at the mask here, when I adjust this, uh, sorry, as I adjust this density, see as I increase that, you see as the subject is getting darker. Okay, so keep that in mind if you want to experiment with how much the shapes interact with your subject, just play around with this density handle. Really, really simple and a quick way to uh, to do that. So I'm just going to keep it there about 50%. I think that looks pretty good. Just going to check out boost shape intensity again. Yeah, I don't think it needs it. Now I'm going to jump inside the shapes folder and I'm just going to go down to the top here and I'm going to flip these to black and back to white. I'm just going to check out if these shapes look better as a darker tone. Maybe this one as a color. Might keep it at that. Okay, I won't go down through them all because it takes a bit of time, but um, I'll leave that for you to play around with. So I'll close that down. Now, what I want to do next is, uh, let's jump inside the paint folder. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn all these off. Okay, one by one here. And so you can see all the paint is gone. Um, and I'm just going to turn on, go from the bottom here, turn on one by one. That looks really cool where it is already. I'm going to leave that. This one here, I'm just going to grab it. I'm going to move it. Um, hit Control or Command T to rotate it. I'm just going to flip that right around. I'm just going to move that up there. This one. Maybe there. Again, this is where you want to spend just a little bit of time and position these uh, where you want. This one doesn't look right hanging out the back there, so maybe there. I'll just rotate it a bit. Like that. Again, don't forget to preview these in a different color. Alright. White is suiting this pretty nicely. That looks cool there, and this one looks good where it is. Alright, um, so I'll leave that. Angular lines, I'm just going to increase that to 100%, see so what that looks like. Uh, might rotate this one as well, we'll see if we get a bit of better combination. Don't forget, if you want more lines here, you can hit Control or Command J. Uh, control T again to rotate them. So I've just created more. I oh, know, something like that. That'll do it. Uh, these two here, I'm just going to play around the opacity. Uh, I 
might just turn this one off. Leave it off. Now, if I turn off the background color layer, you can see I really like how this shadow is showing through here. Okay, we didn't make that a part of our selection at the start of the action, so that's why it's not showing up um, in the default result. But there's a little trick here that I could use to make those shadows appear just down the bottom here and nowhere else. And again, it's through the mask, okay? Now, if I select the mask here um, and start, well, there's a few ways I can do this. I can just hit B, grab the brush tool, make sure black is my active color because I want to hide the layer. I can just brush there and the shadow was revealed. Another way you can do it is to hit G on the keyboard uh, or make sure the gradient tool is activated here when you hit G. Scroll up to the top here and make sure black and white, black to white is selected, top left hand corner. All right, now if I hit G again, uh, yeah, activate the gradient tool. If I select the mask here and I just drag the line from the bottom up here, about halfway, all that's doing, it's, I'll go inside the mask, it's creating a gradient from black to white. So remember the black hides the layer, so we're going from, from black, which is hiding the layer, and it's slowly fading off, so that creates a nice transition. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. Those angle lines are too intense, I'm gonna turn one off again. All right, I'm gonna turn, turn that one back. So that's looking pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna flick on the use original photo color lay here and that looks pretty good i'm just going to tone tone it way down so i'm going to drag the color to zero percent and i'm just going to drag it up a little bit okay i'm going to brush away some of the color from around here okay uh now i'm going to ju jump to randomize overall color i'm going to double click on this layer and i'm just going to play around with this hue handle here and all I'm doing here is quickly getting a preview of different colors, combinations that could work. Okay. And generally what I like to do, uh, if say I move it to, to the green area and the green and the blue tones look a lot better. Okay. I won't set the color here. I'll jump back inside the, the shapes coloring folder and I'll recolor them here. Like I'll click, you know, click on color one. Uh, I'll change it to a green. Okay. And then, you know, this one here to a blue. And then maybe this one to green again. So I like to color them that way, do it manually. Uh, undo that again. So if you don't want these shapes, it's very simple, just turn them off, okay? And they're gone. And all you're left with then is this, uh, this stylized look of your photo and the textures in the background. If you don't want the textures, turn them off. The angle lines, you can turn them off. Paint drops, okay. Um, turn that off. So then, yeah, you've just got this, this new look for your subject. Um, and if you want to export him on a transparent background, very simple, just turn off the background color layer and the background color, okay. So now you can export that as a PNG, but before you do that, make sure the overall sharpening layer is turned off. That casts a gray kind of overtone to your um, design when there's transparent areas. So if turn that off, okay? And then you want to export it as a PNG or a file with a transparent, uh, with transparency. Okay, so just remember to turn that one off. Uh, okay, so let's just get back to where we were. So I reckon that looks really cool. So I'll probably be happy with that as well as, you know, using these shapes. Uh, what I might actually do is select the reveal normal photo mask. I'm going to grab um, my white brush because I want to show this layer. It's going to brush a little bit over his face there. It's going to make it stand out a bit more. Currently it's a bit hidden behind the light. So do that. I'm just going to drag this passage down to zero. And that will do. Now, there's two other things in the actions panel which I haven't talked about yet. So we've got smooth design CS6 plus only, okay? So this uh, this action uses the oil paint filter, which is filter, stylized uh, oil paint, you can see it there. The reason why it's hidden now is because I've got a mask selected. Can't apply it to mask, so that's why it's hidden. So 
Yeah, C6 Plus um, introduced oil paint filter. So for those of you in CS5s and below, it won't work. But you might not want to use this at all. So all this does, um, all you need to do is select it and click play. It'll just take uh, a couple seconds. Okay, so all this, it, well, all it does, it creates two layers at the top here. We've got add sharpening, in brackets opacity, and smooth, smooth design. So what it does, it just smooths out your subject. Okay, uh, it doesn't smooth the background, just your subject. If I turn this on and off, you can see what it's doing. It really smooth. It uses the oil paint filter and smooths out everything. So if there's little areas that look a bit pixelated, it will smooth them out. Uh, which is pretty cool and the add sharpening layer really just makes it pop so you can see it brings out the effect a lot more so if I turn these on and off together so you can see before and after so run that on your photo after you've played around um, with all the layers you've rotated them change the colors and stuff these two are designed to run yeah after you've when you've pretty much finished uh, with adjusting the layers so I'll delete those two the other one here is add soft glow. If I play that, okay, you can see what it does. It adds a very subtle glow um, over your design. I've got in, bra it, in brackets here opacity. So it creates a slate at the top here, overall soft glow and opacity. It counts at 50%. So if I drag it to 100%, you can see it's a bit strong. I'll drag it back to zero. And you only want to I only really want to use this layer quite a low opacity, so I'll start dragging that up. You can see it starts um, really adding a glow to the highlights of your photo. Okay, I just found I just find that using this at a really soft opacity, just uh, sorry, really low opacity, adds a nice little bit of softness um, over the, the design, which looks really cool. So yeah, don't forget to run this at the end when you're finished playing around with all the layers because it creates. Um, a snapshot of your design, it puts it on one layer at the top here. So if I move this layer around, you can see it sits on top of everywhere else. Okay, uh, if I bring it to 100%, you can see it a bit more clearly there. Okay, I'm really happy with that result. Let's compare it against the original. It's going to shift select all this, group it, control command G. So there's the before, and there's the after. Okay, I'll move on to the last example. Okay, so I've got to open the last example. I've just run the action and this is what I've got. So clearly um, there's a problem here you can see with his face. It's, it's generated some lines that I don't want and it's a bit white. So that's the first thing we're going to address. Uh, first thing I'm going to collapse these folders. And so I'm going to jump down to the photo edge lines. I'm going to grab a black brush and I'm just going to brush them away. Next, I'm going to jump to the Reveal Normal Photo Mask. I'm going to grab a white brush. So I'm just going to hit X on the keyboard and flip that to white. It's going to brush over his face. And I'm going to lower the opacity of that, that layer um, to about 50%. So you can see it still keeps some of the um, artistic uh, result and blends with the original. Maybe a little bit more. That'll do. Okay, uh, let's jump to the shapes. I'm going to control click these three because so I'm going to zoom out and control T to rotate them. I'm going to check check out if I get a better combination of angles here. Maybe, maybe like that. Okay, next what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold down shift and click on the shapes folder mask here. So I'm going to hide that mask there. So it's going to give me a quick preview of what it looks like with the shapes intercepting uh, or cutting through our subject. So I'm going to click on the mask to release that. I'm going to double click on it and I'm just going to uh, lower the density a bit. So I'm just going to have those shapes show through a little bit more. Next, I'm going to get a preview of 
the shapes intensity so I'm going to turn that on uh, I like it with it on but I don't know about this darker patch here so I'm just going to select the mask for that layer I'm going to go grab a black brush because I want to hide it and I'm going to brush over that area okay um, I might also oh no I won't actually so next what I want to do is um, I'm going to grab a quick preview of some different colors okay red is looking pretty good okay I might experiment with some reds here I'll go into the shapes coloring I'm going to change this to a red maybe an orange Let's see maybe something like that I'm going to turn on color area 2 let's try blue that looks nice uh, I'm going to turn this one on green maybe try red again I'll cancel that I am going to rotate uh, I'll turn this one off. I'm going to rotate the color area 2 layer. Just leave it there. That looks pretty nice. Uh, we'll go back to here. Let's just check out the colors again. Don't mind the, uh, this orange tone, so I'm going to keep that. Okay, so next I'm going to turn on the original photo color. Okay, and I am going to select the mask, grab my black brush. I'm just going to brush away areas that I don't want in the original color. Okay, maybe a bit around here. A little bit on the guitar. I'm just going to lower the overall opacity of this layer down. I might just uh, preview brushing away at these lines from his hand. Yeah, I might just keep those off. Okay, uh, looking good. I am going to now jump inside the shapes folder. I'm going to preview some of these. I won't do them all because it takes a bit too long. Uh, I'm just going to preview these in different tones. takes too long. Uh, next, let's go inside the paint. I'm going to look at uh, PS1 here and what I'm going to do, I'm going to flip it horizontal and I'm just going to use the shortcuts to do that. Now a little tip when using uh, shortcuts and this might only apply to PCs, I'm going to test this on a Mac, but for those of you on a PC, if, um, if you hold down Alt, okay, and if you look at the menu here when I um, press Alt, you can see how it adds a little underline under these letters here okay so if I hold down alt and hit E that's going to open up the edit menu can you see how edit is underlined so now as I scroll down you can see under transform here you can see how A is underlined and again if I go inside transform um, down to horizontal you can see that H is underlined so if I hold down if I just go alt E Oops, sorry. Alt E A H. That will flip the layer horizontal. Okay. So if I want to flip this vertical vertically, I'll go Alt E A. And if you see, if you go down the bottom here, you can see flip vertical is under V. So I'll just go Alt E A V. 
And that applies with all these other menus. So to quickly open up the filter drop down menu, I can just go Alt T. You can see our T is underlined. Um, and you've got other things that are underlined here, like liquify is L, um, filter gallery is G. So it's a really quick way to navigate through the menus is to just use the shortcuts, okay? It'll increase your workflow um, quite a lot. Now, I am going to just turn all these off. Okay, I'm going to start with the bottom one here. I'm going to flip this to black to see what it looks like. That looks really nice and black. I'm just going to um, make it a bit darker. Right there. I'm just going to I'm just going to flip this vertically. Okay, I like that. Might just move it over here. That'll do. Uh, okay, let's turn these paint stroke layers back on. This one, um, just gonna move, just move it there. You know, I'm doing this really quick, but this is where you want to spend uh, a bit of time just positioning, positioning them in a spot uh, that looks good. So I'm just gonna keep moving up here. Um, I'm just going to flip this vertically. I'm just going to turn that one off. Move that there. This one I might just put over his guitar. And turn this one back on. Uh, I'm going to flip that horizontal, see what that looks like. I'm going to control Z to undo that to preview the two angles. That looks good. Now, what else can we do here? Um, let's turn off the background color layer. And so you can see that now falls back onto our um, original background. But I might just lower the opacity down for this layer. So it's just going to bring in a little bit of the background layer. Not too much. Uh, let's go into the adjust brightness contrast layer. Let's play around with these. Make it a bit darker there. Offsets. Uh, I'll just keep there. Might jump to the randomize overall color. I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to increase the saturation of all the colors. And I might actually bring back some of the color in his face. So reveal, uh, sorry, use original photo color, select the mask, grab a white brush. Brush that in there. Okay, that is looking good. Uh, what else can we do? Shapes, coloring, I think I'm pretty happy with the colors. I'm just gonna turn the green one back on, check that out. Um, play with these colors here. Actually, it might make it a bit brighter. That looks nice. I'm going to select this layer here. I'm going to zoom out. Control T. I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to select the mask. I'm going to rotate that. I like how this little bit of red is showing up here on the guitar. So I'm keeping my eye on that. Looks good. And don't forget, you can go back through and change all these blend modes. Uh, spend a bit of time there. But this is looking pretty good. I am going to now, uh, I'm going to run the add soft glow action. Okay, I'm going to lower the passive down to zero. I'm just going to increase it a bit. Just a little bit. I don't like how it's adding the glow to his face, so I'm going to select the mask. Uh, make sure black is my active brush and brush that away. Okay. And that is looking pretty good. 
Uh, one more thing I might experiment with here is I might just grab um, a bunch of these and move them up above the photo style build folder. See what that looks like. Uh, I'll grab these ones. Whoops. Uh, sorry, grab these ones here. Move them up. Alright, that looks really cool. So you can see how that, I think it's this one here. Yeah, PS2, it was the one I put behind the guitar. So now I've just put that on top of the subject. So you can see that paint is now uh, running through there, which looks really cool. Move that around, but I think that... That looks good. Okay, so that is it. I'm going to just compare this against the original. See what we just created. So there's the before. There's the after. Okay, so that's it. Uh, just check back on this video tutorial if you're stuck anywhere along the line and want some tips. Um, there's probably a whole heap of things that I forgot to cover here, but you can just sort of experiment with all the layers and um, create all different types of effects. Just don't forget, uh, if you don't want to use the shapes, okay, you can just turn them off. Okay, so you can just fall back onto um, yeah, the textures and the stylized look of your photo. Play around and change all the colors, the position of things. Um, you can have a lot of fun with this and come up with some really cool um, designs. So, uh, yeah, that's it. If you've got any questions, uh, shoot me an email. If not, have a good time using it. Thanks.